Hi! In this video, I wanted to demonstrate using the battery bank I built along with this 800 watts pure sign inverter to power the essential electronics in my house. I had done a few videos on building the battery bank and reviewing the inverters we're using here today. For those who have not seen these videos but want to watch them first, I will put the links below. Before I get into the details of this video, I wanted to put up a few warnings. First, do not attempt to do your own electrical work in your house if you are not certified to do so. Even for people who are electrical engineers like myself that have the knowledge, I would still recommend hiring a professional electrician to perform all mains related work because that's the stuff they do for a living and you might have all the knowledge but would not have sufficient practice to do the job safely and correctly. Another reason is that here in the US, depending on the region you, you are in, we have so many codes and regulations that keep evolving. Unless you are a professional electrician, it is very hard to keep track of all these latest codes and regulations. And second, do not run an inverter or generator by backfeeding into the house outlet. I know there are a lot of YouTube videos out there showing people how this can be done, but this is very dangerous. You potentially put yourself and the lineman at risk when you do this. The bottom line is that an interlocking main switch or a transfer sub-panel must be in place for you to power your house with the inverters or generators safely. So with the uh, warnings out of the way, let's uh, talk about the setup here. And uh, for that, let me actually first go to the garage and show you the transfer sub-panel I have. And now we're in the garage and you can see here to the right hand side, this is the uh, where the mains comes in from the utilities. And to the left, that's the transfer panel. So when the power goes off, I would flip the switch from using the mains to using a generator. So essentially that disconnects all the circuits tied to the sub panel from the mains. So that makes it safe to operate on your generator and uh, inverters. And depending on the wattage of your generator, you may get different uh, plugs because also that is regulated. And for my generator, I, I'm using a 5,000 watts uh, gas power generator and uh, the plug comes with it is a L14-30R connector. So basically this is a NAMA connector. NAMA stands for National Electrical Manufacturer Association and it is basically a an US uh, United States uh, standard setting body that sets standards for these kind of uh, interconnectivities between electrical systems. So some of the generator transfer switch, uh, the outlets is actually directly connected here, but I prefer this kind of uh, wiring so I can drag this along to plug into my generator without having to find the cable when the power is off. So the cable is always connected. So what I'm planning to do is to pull this cable and into the adjacent basement office and we'll see if it's long enough and we will take a look from there. Okay, now we are back in the lab and uh, that cable itself is about 10 feet too short to reach this uh, bench. So I might need a extension cable to get it working. But before doing that, you notice that we have a standard three prom outlet and uh, the generator transfer panel uses a L14-30R type of NEMA connector. So how do we actually make this connection? Well, the main circuit coming into each house in the US uses a so-called split phase scheme. So basically it has a neutral line and two live lines. So let me draw that just here. So you have the live one, live two, and the neutral. And uh, each wire is uh, basically 120 volts with respect to your neutral, 120, and uh, 120. But uh, between these two lines, we have 240. The reason is because there are waveforms coming in at exactly 180 degrees out of phase. So they're opposing each other and at any given moment the difference between those 
uh, is a sum of that uh, waveform. So it's a 240 instead of a 120. So this is how you get a 240 in your house for clothes dryers, water heaters, and uh, ranges. And uh, to evenly distribute the load, half of your house are running, uh, the 120 devices are running on one of the live wires and uh, the other half are running on the other 120 volts line. Because when operating using a generator, we're isolated from the mains, we could source the same inverter output voltage on both of these live wires. And uh, so to bring them in phase, this is totally safe to do because everything running on 120 will still see the 120 uh, volts and the desired voltage for them to work. And for appliances that are running on 240, as you will see here, they simply just would not work because these two lines are essentially tied together. They would just be zero volt across them. So uh, they would just not work instead of uh, having problems. Now that said, you cannot just power a single face and leave the other one floating. Uh, the reason is that because you might have appliances, let's say a uh, heater, right, connected between this uh, two live wires. And let's say if you are only powering L1, this is 120, this is neutral, then what happens is you're going to have a voltage that uh, it's uh, passing through this resistor appearing on L2. And when you have other devices connected to the, uh, the second line, uh, you will experience brown out. And worse yet, if there's some inductive load here, let's say a motor or something, then you will have weird voltage waveforms appearing on this uh, second line and potentially gonna creating some dangerous voltage spikes and might even damage your connected devices. So basically, if you are doing this, you have to either connect L1, L2 using split phase inverters or you have to connect them together to a single phase. So because we don't have a split phase inverter and we actually are gonna be tying the L1 and L2 together. So that's exactly what I did here, which I'm gonna show you. So here's the cable that I made for connecting this inverter to the transfer panel. And uh, on the left side, you have a standard three prong plug and on the right hand side, we have this uh, NEMA L14-30R receptacle. And how this is wired is that the ground connects to the ground, and uh, let's put it this way, and uh, the live connects to the two lives, and the neutral connects to the neutral. So let's uh, use a multimeter to check it out here. And uh, let's uh, try measuring this. So the ground, let's do the ground first, and uh, if I can hold it, ground, okay, not touching the ground. Okay, ground is uh, touching, and uh, now this is uh, uh, the neutral. Come on, neutral. And this is live one, and if you can just, and this is the other live. Uh, so as you can see that these two are actually connected together, these two uh, lives. So that's how this is wired. Now this is only going to be uh, powering the 120 circuits, as I mentioned earlier, so the 240 would just be left unpowered. And so as you can see here, I just connected everything up. This inverter is powered by this battery bank at the uh, back here, and this is the battery connection. And I have this uh, clamp meter clamped onto the battery so that we can later on monitor the current flow. And uh, I have the outlet from this inverter into this WhatsApp Pro uh, power meter so we can monitor the connected device's uh, wattage. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have uh, the cable, unfortunately, was too short, so I had to use an extension cable. So this will have some voltage drop, but uh, nevertheless, it should be able to, I should be able to demonstrate uh, everything working. And uh, on the other end of this cable, basically, I used that uh, adapter cable we made earlier with uh, the, the three prompt to uh, the LR, uh, sorry, to the L14 30R NEMA connector and connected directly to the transfer panel. So now we want to uh, 
get this uh, whole thing started up and we'll test out how it works. So let's uh, first take the uh, turn on the clamp meter and zero it so that later on we can read the, um, the current. So now we zeroed it out and we're at uh, the 400 amp range. And now I'm going to turn on this uh, inverter. And you notice that this actually flickers a little bit, this light. Uh, uh, maybe you can't see, but that's the over voltage light. And as I mentioned during my review, this one sometimes when it's uh, above 13.5 volts, it does start to uh, flicker. But um, it doesn't affect its operation. So when we put some load onto it, you will see that the light would uh, become dim. And right now, the connected uh, device, obviously, everything is not running off the inverter yet, so it's a zero watt. So I'm going to go to the garage and uh, flip the transfer switch. So now the house would be uh, powered by this inverter instead of the mains. So I'm going to yell it out when I do that, and you might see a flickering of the light because momentarily it will be disconnected from the mains. And you may also hear the uh, UPS. I don't know if the UPS would react to that, but uh, you know, like transfer in and out uh, while I do that. So just uh, hang in here, and I'm going to uh, turn the switch. So I'm not sure if you heard, uh, I don't think the uh, UPS, uh, maybe you heard the relay clicking uh, because it's uh, short enough it didn't uh, trigger the alarm. But uh, now you can see the whole house actually is running on this inverter. And here, right now you will see that uh, we're running on this uh, uh, inverter, the whole house, and we're drawing about uh, 54.55 amps from the battery, and uh, right now we're at 482 watts. So if I turn on and off the lights, you will see uh, uh, this wattage change because the whole house right now is uh, running on this inverter. So right now it's 400. The uh, one watts, so let me turn off a light and we'll see if it uh, changes. So I just uh, turn off one light and you can see here, so I'll turn off another one. Yep, so I turn off the basement light and now it dropped to uh, 367 watts. So let me turn it back on. And uh, during that brief transfer, again, you probably heard that UPS uh, started intervening because of the voltage is a little bit of uh, unstable when you are powering on a lot of the uh, devices all at once. Anyway, so it is running at no problem. And now I'm going to uh, change it back to mains power. So now we are back to mains power, and uh, as you can see, the watts reading dropped back to zero. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned something new today. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up, and I will catch up with you next time.